Welcome. I want to say something about different type of problems. The first thing uh, which I want to address is the surprise. And I was surprised when working on problem on, of acyclic chromatic number because I thought that's something which has never been considered, but it was considered in 73 by Branko Greenbaum. And uh, he conjectured that for a planar graph, the acyclic chromatic number is always bounded above by five. If I would have known about all this work, I would not have got into that because that's scary. And so there's a lot of work in the 70s, actually before this uh, four color theorem was proven, of course, one was much more interested in the four color problem because maybe there is an approach, a new approach to the four color theorem. So when Grunbaum wrote that, there was no four color theorem yet. Greenbaum already had nine and then it was reduced to uh, five by Borodin. That was actually solving the conjecture of uh, Greenbaum. So when I worked on this, I actually thought, you know, that should be possible to have uh, before and like the chromatic number, it should not be too difficult to break all these Kempe chains. And uh, of course there are the prism, prism, prism examples like the octahedron which uh, need uh, five colors to acyclically uh, color. That was already pointed out by Greenbaum and but it turns out that these are the only uh, these are the only counter examples. So if you have a graph which is not a prism then you can color it acyclically with four colors. And what I did two months ago was uh, just use the four color theorem then uh, show kind of with a heat flow that we can reduce the we can reduce the graph, make it smaller, a kind of a discrete Ricci flow, make it smaller, and then uh, keep the still the, the chromatic information so that it's still a, a coloring, a full coloring, and then until we reach almost almost reach the prism graph. Before we reach the prism graph, we can color it with with uh, four acyclic colors, and then we. We, we go back and use this coloring which we have here to redo the steps which we have done and in the end we have a coloring of the original graph with four colors so that we have no cyclic Kempe part. <clears throat> That's a uh, first topic, a little bit surprising for me to see this already in the literature. The second thing which I want to address is kind of the difficulty of problems. We have already looked at that last time. And uh, so there are this, there's this famous dichotomy between P problems, problems, and NP problems. It's something which is done now in every computer science course, like 121. And, but in the 70s, this was kind of, a, you know, cutting edge. Also, when I was a student, complexity theory already was big and I, I was even giving a talk in a Specker seminar on, on a graphism or So that was kind of big and it's still a, a topic which is beautiful and uh, classical. Uh, and uh, so there are some problems which are easy, like finding an Eulerian path. If something is easy, if something has a polynomial algorithm, there's usually a nice theorem behind here. And Eulerian has the euler here holds or theorem which says that the graph is uh, has an Eulerian path even only if every vertex degree is even. So that's a classical result in every graph theory book. Hamiltonian is difficult. There is no theorem, general theorem, uh, and uh, so <laughs> it must be NP complete, but that was that needed some time, right, to to figure out uh, edge arboricity. So I worked on edge arboricity here in this context. Vertex opericity is also interesting. That also uh, uh, relates with coloring, and but that's an NP-complete problem, while edge opericity is easy. And again, here is a theorem. There is the Nash-Williams theorem, which tells, kind of allows to reduce the problem. And uh, also for uh, click, the so click problem. That was one of the earliest, well, one of the twenty-one problems of Cart. And also the click problem, uh, find if given k and the graph, find all complete subgraphs of uh, dimension k. And uh, so for small 
uh, clicks like for three that's a, that's a polynomial problem so but if you want to do it for general k then it's then it's difficult and I will come back to this uh, another problem is the chromatic problem if you if you want to color with two colors that's not a big deal but color with three or more colors this is uh, MP complete so this is a kind of these are examples of you know easy problems examples of odd of uh, uh, hard problems it's kind of you know nobody really knows what makes the difference because maybe there is no difference if p is equal to np but everybody believes that this is a different class complexity class than than this now uh, as for elegance i want to illustrate this with a problem i've also worked on since a, since a decade of problem types I've worked on since a decade. Euler characteristic is one of the classical topics in topology and uh, so I was interested of course in gauss bonnet type result and worked on this already 10 years, more than 10 years ago. So kind of that's the culmination of you know 10 years of work is uh, this formula here which gives uh, a formula for the f vector of a graph in terms of the f vectors of the unit spheres. This is a gauss bonnet result because you can just just reduce it by evaluating it at some point to the Euler characteristic and that this is actually gauss bonnet churn can be seen in a geometric framework like if you have a, a, a graph which is a, a fine triangulization of a two-n dimensional manifold then you get the you get to the gauss bonnet churn integrand which uh, uh, already has been you know considered by Hopf, Allendorf for wide and others and then Chern was really proving it in the intrinsic way but nowadays we don't actually need the intrinsic proof in principle because you can always Nash embed a manifold into a ambient space and then by general principles there is a, just one curvature which has rotational symmetry and that's the curvature which you get also here but look at the simplicity here this is just you cannot make it simpler. So the curvature is actually just the same, and if you do the same thing for the unit spheres, then for the for the whole graph, it's just that you have to integrate. And I want to illustrate this with a code. I this was code uh, which which I I wrote also, and in 2019, but I reduced it two days ago from 170 characters to 133 because there was a competition one line com competition in Mathematica and I submitted this. It's kind of just amazingly simple. It's also a beautiful language, uh, Mathematica, because you don't need any here, any kind of explanation what things do, what things V vertex list means. You take the list of vertices, it's the vertex set, the length, right? That's the number of vertices. You integrate and then you take a sum, that's this here, and then you, 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 you take the vertex delete of the neighborhood graph of G of V, then you take V away, that's the unit sphere, right? The neighborhood graph is everything in distance zero or one, the unit sphere is everything in distance one, so you have here the unit sphere, and then you evaluate it, then you integrate that, you just integrate that from uh, zero to T, so 133 characters. So it's elegant, even so it's a hard problem, this uh, is a sharp P problem in the complexity class of Valiant, which has been introduced also in about well, the same time, like 1979. <clears throat> so this is a, a, actually a theorem which only has been proven in 2013 by uh, two computer scientists. Uh, it's a beautiful paper also with lots of uh, relations with algebra. So this is uh, this is elegance, and it's just need to have short code. The last thing uh, which I want to address is beauty, and uh, so beauty is very important too. And if you look at the four color theorem, which has been introduced 1852 by Guthrie, and it was kind of just a mess, you know, if you look at the. Uh, uh, the four color theorem, how it has been looked, that you look at real maps and you have to say what is the, you know, what is the boundary, are there smooth curves, are there piecewise smooth curves, what is allowed, what does it mean if two 
uh, regions intersect. And if you look at kind of what can happen in the two-dimensional plane, the, you know, this is, uh, this is a piano curve, but <laughs> very, very complicated. So you have a, you have a, uh, you have here a, in topology usually a huge mess, and you have to say how to reduce it to something sensible. And uh, but this has been early on then reduced to graph theory. Graph theory has been introduced by Euler already, and from topology to kind of something combinatorial. Also, Birkhoff here was working, and many many mathematicians also here have been working on that problem, including uh, also uh, Charles Pierce, who uh, is one of the greatest ever mathematicians, uh, not appreciated at this time, but he had also worked on the four-color uh, theorem. And so this is still topological graph theory because you are assume you have a planar graph, which is something living on a sphere. If you live on a sphere, that's invoking classical topology and so infinity, but uh, what uh, Kuratowski allowed to characterize planar graphs poorly combinatorial, you have no copy of K5 or K33, no copy of the utility graph or uh, the K5 graph, a homeomorphic copy. And so that's then poorly graph theoretical. And then even more reduction is uh, Whitney. The hardest thing to do is to color a two-dimensional sphere. I actually when I started with this working on that in 2013, so I thought this is actually much easier if you have a manifold. But it's actually the hardest thing because these are, by a theorem of Whitney, if you look at the, the maximal planar four connected graph, that's what you can reduce everything to, then it's a two dimensional sphere. Then comes another idea of using topology and uh, that's Fisk who has uh, worked in the 70s on that and what you can do is you can reduce it to a, a problem of coloring larger dimensional spaces and uh, so this then reduces to a, a game which you can do. You take the graph, the planar graph or the, the two sphere, you build a, a three-dimensional ball, you can for example put one vertex in the middle and, you, and then what happens is there are uh, Fisk sets, Fisk manifolds. This is actually a union of one-dimensional manifolds, possibly with boundary, which can uh, start and end at the. They, they can intersect this, uh, these manifolds. So, uh, but uh, but they they are there, and uh, they are the obstruction to color with four colors. That's essentially what uh, he would figure out in two-dimension for two-dimensional graphs. If you if, if every vertex degree is even, then you can color with three colors. And that's uh, the Hewood picture. You just, you know, take a triangle, color it, and then you flip over, flip over, flip over. And if the vertex degrees are even, then you, you, have, you, can, you can do that without having a problem. And also here, if you have here no such edge which has odd degree, then you can color it with four colors. If you can color with four colors, then you also color automatically the boundary. So what you have to do is you have to uh, play a game. And I illustrated that with a couple of movies, kind of in 2014, 2015, etc. So you do edge refinement. You actually kind of use a knife and you refine. You make the graph larger and larger and larger like that. But uh, you want to get rid of more and more of this Fisk manifold. And uh, this is, uh, seems to be possible actually quite constructively. You start at some point and you expand more and more, you have a region where there is no Fisk uh, set and you always refine, refine, but you're not going to refine anything on the boundary and you're not refining anything you have already fixed. And so you're moving and sweeping through the whole thing and in the end you have a no Fisk set anymore, which means you can color the whole ball with four colors. Once you can do that, you automatically have constructed the coloring of the boundary. That's what I call beautiful. So it's a it's a treacherous topic, this uh, coloring business. And uh, Kempe, who has introduced this Kempe chain idea, has famously, you know, produced a proof, but uh, didn't pan out. It proves the five color theorem, but not the four color theorem. That's it for today.